Hello, I'm JW. This time uh, we're not using the usual camera because uh, the rest of this was recorded on the phone, so using that as well here. And uh, we're going to have a look at a particular flat. Now, this has been on the market for months, uh, probably the best part of a year, and it's described as newly refurbished. And it's got a brand new kitchen and new bathroom and all the rest, and the rest of the room is all decorated up with new carpet and all the things you'd expect to see. But uh, as we'll find out shortly, the electrical installation is mediocre. Some parts of it are rather old, and even the bits that are new are pretty poor. No documentation or anything else, no certificates or anything else like that. And uh, the consumer unit is pretty old as well. Now, most of what we're going to have a look at is in the kitchen, but uh, we'll have a look at a couple of other bits as well. So uh, let's uh, get over there and see what kind of mess we can find. This is the existing consumer unit. It's pretty old, it's uh, just MCVs and a main switch. No RCDs whatsoever. Um, probably 20, 25 years old at least, could be uh, somewhat older. And uh, the best part of this here is that this is not even attached to the wall. There you go, it's just literally hanging by whatever wires are attached to it. On the side here, we can see there's various wires and things that have been put in recently. There's no certificates or documentation for these. And you can see the you know, coloured cores exposed there. So all of this mess will, of course, need to be replaced. Here's what we've got inside the consumer unit. As you can see, there's a mixture of old and new wiring. The red and black stuff is going to be the older stuff. And then we've got quite a lot of new brown and blue in there. Now, the fact it's blue and blue must have been fitted in the last, well, 10 years or so. Yeah, no certificates or anything else. Not uh, particularly tidy there. We've got a circuit there that's not in use. That's 16 in the middle here. So we can turn that off as it's not connected to anything. The three on the right are all sixes. They claim to be lighting according to the cover. This is a two bedroom flat. I really don't see why it needs three lighting circuits. The two 32s there are claiming to be rings. Whether they are or not is another matter. Some testing I did on a previous occasion indicated that they almost certainly are not. And then that one at the end with the 32 that's turned off is supposed to be the oven and hob. And uh, as you can see, that's brand new as well. Tails are undersized. You can see the uh, things there, they look like 16s. I think that's fairly typical for older installations. Don't know what the main fuse is. This is just a link here, red one. Main fuse is elsewhere. This cable on the supply actually goes up and above into the ceiling and is actually in the loft above. So quite where that comes from is unknown. Anyway, most of the cabling is uh, going down the side there because this thing needs to be relocated. Got obviously replaced as well, but relocated much further down because uh, currently we're here up at the ceiling. It's in this cupboard. Let's look at it there. And then the floor is uh, all the way down there. So, most inconvenient location. That's sort of the uh, location of it. So, uh, definitely not. Easy access for anybody. So I can't even reach up there without a ladder. Right, quick look at this random socket here in the kitchen. As you can see, it's new wiring, blue and brown. Someone's put the CPCs into the same piece of sleeving here. And yes, the power is off and isolated already. Let me check that before. So, uh, yes, yeah, not the uh, world's best installation. No separate lead to the back box, although these do have a fixed lug, so technically not needed, but yeah, the question of doing a uh, minimum required and uh, doing a proper job. But uh, yeah, the two CPCs are just uh, gnashed together there and just put into the single. And uh, a fair bit of uh, copper showing on those terminals there. That's one of them. The only other socket in this brand new kitchen is this one over here, which is similar design there. Seems a bit on the thin side, so we may bring in some additional sockets there. That's two doubles across the whole width of that. It's really not good enough. This is the other socket in this kitchen. Same deal as the other one, all both CPCs and the single uh, sleeving there. Corner entry for wires, rather odd choice. And this box is not particularly well uh, attached here. So it's not actually uh, screwed in there very well. And the wires are too short because this is as long as they get. So there's just enough to get in there. They've cut them too short. 
And this box has been reused because if you look at the back, there's the earth connection on the back there with a wire in it. And what we've got in it is literally just a wire. It is just sitting there. It doesn't connect to anything. So this has been hoiked out of somewhere else and put back in here. I really can't see the point. I mean, 50 pence for a box. I mean, it's really they don't that desperate to recycle them. Then there you go. And it's screwed in here with a couple of these random screws, but you saw it's not really attached particularly well. So improvements there. Definitely needed, as well as, say, putting in at least another double next to that. So I've actually got some way to plug things in. Now, this is the house with the terrible connection for the cooker here, or the oven and the electric hob above. Isolator is in this cupboard, and it's actually down in here. And it's that one in there, which I did put a picture on uh, some while ago when we were just having a quick look around this property. So it's, it's never been screwed to the wall while it's hanging out. So, not good now. I'm just going to have a look at this oven and uh, unscrew it. Normally, there should be screws located in here and also there, but uh, it's not even been screwed in. So, that's. Uh, Piss poor, and not bothered to fit that correctly, so let's have that out and see what's going on behind it. So, oh, not screwed in. Comes with what appears to be factory fitted flex. That just goes in the back in there. So, I assume that came with it from the factory, and it just disappears through a hole. And I've got this other one here for the hob. Again, this looks like a factory fitted flex. Just goes up inside there. Concerning, I can see what appears to be the link between the phases there, or what if it would be a multi phase connection, is still there. So uh, that may or may not work correctly. And the wires just go through here, just like that. And of course, that is in here somewhere next to that switch. So all that will have to come out. And of course we're going to need to relocate that isolator because having the isolator in that cupboard way in the corner, woefully inadequate, no one's going to reach there. You might have a job to reach that, so we're going to have to relocate that and place it above there in the wall where it should have been in the first place. So, uh, yes, that's certainly not very good. Yes, hob is one of these cheapo things and all the holds it in. It's on this stupid spring clip on the side, so it just shoves in and uh, that is that. Of course, it was sticky for some reason. It's on crap vinyl. I've not sealed the edges of it in any serious way here. It's got some kind of tacky substance on it. It's like PVA or something inappropriate. I should have uh, aluminium tape here to uh, seal the edges, but obviously they didn't bother with that. This is the hob connection. This looks like, well, it might be a factory flex, so it doesn't look all that large. So I don't think it is the factory one. It's just something that someone has installed. And we have got the link between the two here. It is odd how there's an extra one, say there, which is basically one them, but doesn't appear to be required as the first diagram is on the plate there. Just show installing the one link there, so just your link here, nothing connecting to terminal one. That'll be for twin phase connection and likewise there, but uh, yeah, it's not entirely sure this flex here, although it's uh, claim it should be um, 2.5, but uh, that doesn't look like 2.5 to me. So again, that may need some adjustment or improvement. So the are going to have to be relocated somewhere here. This is all plasterboard dry line, so there shouldn't be too much trouble to get the things in there and drop them down behind. Fortunately, it was not tiled. And we'll put a couple of extras uh, of the sockets on the wall as well. Let's say a single or well, double outlet there rather is uh, not going to do the job for that. And over here, again, it's the uh, only one that's actually fitted, so not really going to do the job. There are some in the cupboards here for the uh, dishwasher, and inexplicably there's one in that corner as well, but can't see the point of that because uh, I'm not going to be plugging stuff 
in there. And that's the boiler which also plugs in underneath. And finally with these sockets, another little tiresome annoyance. As you can see the clearance there is about one inch, 25 millimetres below that. And the upstand, the only other socket in this kitchen is over here. I'm not sure you can already see the problem. One and three quarter, we'll go on for 44 millimeters. So, two sockets in the whole place, and they couldn't even get down things level. Right, this kitchen has down lights in, all brand new, LED, white, which is a fairly odd choice, but taking this one out just to see what the deal is. LED separate view 10, I believe. Yeah, and uh, here's the uh, wiring. As you can see, the you know, conductor is just. Uh, hanging out there. And again, we've got this, both CPCs in the same piece of sleeving thing again. That is as long as the wires get, so and that's pretty poor. Let's just uh, take another one out and see. I just took this one out. This is even worse. Wires hanging out, no sleeving whatsoever. So uh, again, somebody just couldn't be bothered. And it's not as if these have a small connection box. I mean, that's a pretty sizable thing there. Could easily get those two cables fitted in that correctly, but just say I just chose not to bother. And this thing here is supposed to clip in this bit on the side with a screw so it doesn't sit on top of the lamp. Not so much of a disaster with uh, LEDs, but uh, nevertheless fitted incorrectly. These are actually in light, so they're not like super cheap economy style, but fortunately, the installation of them definitely is so. That's two out of the uh, six there, just or eight pigs at random. I'm sure the others are going to be pretty much the same. Now, continuing the delights in this kitchen, we have an extractor in this thing here. It's one of these where the lid is sort of attached to the front, the usual kind of uh, thing there. So, brand new, never used, because that's basically this whole kitchen. So, there it is. So, uh, let's see where this connects. On the top here is where the air comes out, and there's the pole where the ducting ought to be connected. So, as you can see, it's just going to splatter all of the stuff comes out directly onto the ceiling because they couldn't be bothered to actually duct it to the outside. So, it's pointless and useless. And where does the power come from? Well, it comes from this plug here, just uh, stuck in that socket on the wall. Now, that's nothing particularly wrong with that, except. Let's just see what the plug plug is. Yep, unsleeved pin. So this dates to prior to sleeved pins coming in, and that was in the 1980s. I think it's about 84 for our memory. So this is definitely not a new plug. It definitely didn't come with this appliance. So again, we've got a load of recycling old cap here. Because of course, saving 50 pence to get a new plug is top priority when you're redoing a property. So. That one needs to be replaced. I mean, yeah, there's not a major risk there, but the point is, it's a piece of old junk. It shouldn't be there. And it'd be better off with a fused connection unit there anyhow, so it can just be wired in. Just have a switch. Now, this is the boiler. Again, this is brand new. This is some gas thing. Obviously, we don't do uh, gas here. There's the uh, flue on the top there. A bit of a convoluted shambles, but there we go. And... Uh, where does the water connect? Well, this is a combination boiler, so it only has basically power and a thermostat. So uh, that's the lead there coming down that white job, and it comes down inside of the cupboard. There it is, coming through the hole, and down there, and then it goes in to that double socket over there. And uh, again, this is supposed to be a brand new kitchen, but it's pretty obvious that that plug isn't new, and you can see all the emulsion paint slapped over the socket, so that ain't new either. Let's have this out of here. Yep. It's another one of those unsleeved pin affairs from the 1980s. And I uh, don't know if you can get that, but someone's written on the plug, washing machine. It bloody obviously isn't because it's the boiler, isn't it? So there we go, more recycling of old junk. And there's a pipe there for some reason, just unsupported. So, that's that. I just have to cut this silicone because for some reason this cover 
which is just freestanding. So I'm going to silicone it to the worktop, which is hopeless because how else are you supposed to adjust the uh, or fill the thing up when it needs doing? Here's someone's effort at installing the wireless thermostat receiver. It's hanging and its wires, literally just hanging. So that's crap, isn't it? It has got the rubber thing on it, so that makes all the difference, doesn't it? But yeah, it's just literally hanging there. Not even any effort or attempt to secure it to anything. It's falling out. That's the rest of the uh, plumbing pipes there. Filling uh, loop here, which appears to be permanently on here. That's probably not recommended. Uh, that's the other end of it. Anyway, and then this is the flex, which goes down for the power. And as you see, there's a massive crink in it already. Goes up through that hole. No grommet there. Presumably it's supposed to have a rubber thing on it. The same as this doesn't. So there's the rubber thing on the thermostat wire. And that's presumably the hole it was supposed to fit into. So, yeah, and that will need some attention. Now I've seen enough in that kitchen because uh, basically everything in it is no good. So let's have a look in this bathroom instead. Now this bathroom has some familiar looking down lights. Here's one of them I just pulled out. First one we got to. It's the same uh, thing as before, the in-light uh, jobs there. So. And uh, yeah, there's the wiring. So uh, again, CPC and single sleeve, massive lengths of exposed inner you know, core, and uh, pretty much the same as the others. And uh, I'm not going to take them out today, but I'm sure that the other four, all four, are going to be pretty much the same. And there's no extractor in this bathroom either. So uh, just the four lights, plain ceiling. And nothing else. Uh, there's a shower there, that's from the combination boiler. All brand new, but apparently they couldn't afford to put in an extractor, but they've fully tiled the place with all the stuff. And then we have this basin. Now, nothing particularly unusual about that, but uh, what's unusual is underneath the basin here. Let's open up this door. And what we have here is a wire hanging out. Just a bit of twin in earth there, looks like one millimetre. No uh, sleeving on the CBC at all, just flapping there. And the line of neutral stuck in these terminals for unknown reasons. And it goes over the back there. So yeah, I don't really know what that's for, but why we didn't have it, because very much is in the cabinet under the basin. So not really any electrical stuff you'd want there. I don't like this waste pipe either, it's like something from Ikea, some kind of flexible hose for some reason. But they probably couldn't be bothered to get a proper pipe, so look forward to blockages there. Nothing else, just a radiator there from the gas boiler and the down lights. And my least favourite item in the world, the old manky switch. Extra noisy, extra clanky. Looks like a cheap one from Wilkinson, but anyway. Now here's that cable, and uh, strange angle, but there we go. So that's on. If we go to the blue wire, we can see that we're getting 230. And between the CPC, we're getting 247 which is what you'd expect. But here we're going to be getting about 2.30. Now uh, what made life less obvious is when I initially connected this, the LED lights in this room, in the ceiling, flickered. So let's just turn those lights on. And we're still on there. The CPC we're getting 247, and if we go to the blue, we get nothing because what this is is permanent line and switched line from the lighting and the CPC. No neutral here at all. So that's a quick look at that particular property, and as you can see, most of the uh, alleged new work there is really a load of old rubbish, and uh, so who did it is unknown. and. Uh, 
like no certificates or anything else. And uh, yes, I'm fully aware that the uh, tester used in that last segment was, of course, uh, a bit broken and old and the uh, covers at the end were missing and so on because the other newer tester wasn't uh, actually uh, with me at the time. I'd left it uh, somewhere else. But uh, anyway, proved the point there that uh, whatever that wire was for, it's not going to be any use because, of course, it's just got uh, line and switch line and no neutral. So uh, whatever its purpose, uh, it's not going to be used for that. Now, uh, that's uh, the end of this particular video. And as I say, the other rooms uh, wasn't really much to see in there, just a few sockets and some lights, but uh, they're not exactly perfect either. But uh, the main deal was that uh, dreadful uh, kitchen shambles. So until next time, thanks for watching.